Hey everyone, Joey here, and today I want to talk about The Legend of Zelda. Namely, some comments made by series producer A.G. Aonuma this week during an IGN interview. He was basically asked how he felt about Zelda fans saying that they missed the traditional linear Zelda of the past, to which he responded, Well, I do think we as people have a tendency to want the thing that we don't currently have, and there's a bit of a grass is greener mentality, but I also think that with the freedom players have in the more recent games in the series, there still is a set path, it just happens to be the path that they chose. So I think that this is one thing I kind of like to remind myself about the current games that we're making, but also, it's interesting when I hear people say those things because I am wondering, why do you want to go back to a type of game where you're more limited or more restricted in the types of things or ways you can play? But I do understand that desire that we have for nostalgia, and so I can also understand it from that aspect. Now when I first heard this quote, I immediately had strong feelings about it as a longtime Zelda fan. However, it is important to note that he is the developer of these games, so he's automatically going to have a way more different perspective than someone who's been playing them. He has been making these games for decades. He's seen the ins and outs of them. He has seen them all the way from conception up until the final release. He's going to see things differently than the fans do. And because he's been working on these games for what, over 30 years now? He is no doubt going to have strong feelings about making them but I do think he's a little off base about some things here. It started when he asked the fans, why do you want to go back to a type of game where you're more limited or more restricted than the types of things or ways you can play? And when I heard that, I wanted to ask back to him, why do you think being more limited or more restricted is a bad thing? I should preface this by giving my own thoughts on the current state of the Zelda formula, the more open-air style games of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. My thoughts are as follows, they're great games. I have my own grievances with them that I'll get to later, but I want to say right now, I'm not one of those people who thinks that Zelda needs to go all the way back to the traditional, more linear 3D style. No, Zelda has a really good thing going for it by being open world, and I think that's what a lot of Zelda fans wanted around the time Skyward Sword came out. Because yeah, to Alnuma's credit, that formula was getting kind of stale and predictable. So it was natural that there would have to be a shakeup, and I loved when I found out that the next Zelda game, that being Breath of the Wild, was going to be open world. And clearly, other people loved it as well. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are the best-selling Zelda games by a large margin, and I mean a very large margin. Clearly, people loved this formula, and it would be foolish for Nintendo to go back to where they started, making more linear and less open Zelda Zelda games when people clearly love the open air formula so much. However, there are things about this formula that I and many others are already tired of. And this is why I think Aonuma is a bit off base of how Zelda fans are thinking right now. At least most Zelda fans, because what I personally am asking for is not a return to the traditional 3D Zelda started by Ocarina of Time. What I and I think many others want is for Nintendo to look back at what made those games special and implement them into the new open air formula somehow. After all, Zelda was pretty much made for open world. The very first game was technically open world. That said, there's no denying that the more linear 3D Zeldas of the past did things better than the current games. The philosophy of open air Zelda is that the world is your oyster. Once you leave that initial tutorial island, plateau, what have you, you can explore anywhere at any time. You can even go straight to the final boss if you wanted to. But if you make the wise choice and don't do that, you could tackle each story objective in any order you want. You don't even have to get the Master Sword. That's how freeing this new era of Zelda is. Although, it comes at quite a few significant costs. Namely, the story. Because these games are designed with player freedom in mind, the ability to take on those story objectives in any order you see fit, the narrative suffers greatly as a result. Other than the beginnings of these games, there's really no linear structures to the stories whatsoever. It always involves Link going to a province to see what the problem is, fix that problem, move on to the next province, rinse and repeat until you get to the final boss. Because the game doesn't know what order you're going to be tackling these objectives in, the story doesn't have any real flow to it. X doesn't lead to Y and Y doesn't lead to Z. The stories in those provinces are self-contained, they don't make any references to what's happened earlier in the game, and this is greatly felt in Tears of the Kingdom where key plot points are repeated constantly because, again, the game doesn't know which objective you're going to take on first. 
And as a result, the story is quite literally repetitive. And if I have to keep watching the same imprisoning war cutscene, I'm gonna lose it. This issue was definitely not present in older 3D Zelda games because the story moved along in a traditional fashion. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's a climax, there's a resolution. And that's one thing that I greatly miss about the Zelda games of old, and I still think you can have that in an open-air Zelda game. It would require giving up a significant amount of player freedom, but personally, I wouldn't mind that as long as the story is good. But other than that, a big element that these new Zelda games are missing is that sense of progression. That isn't to say there's none of it in Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild, but I felt like the traditional Zelda games did this better. In Zelda games of old, rather than having the whole world open to you at the start, you'd be cut off from accessing different areas until you found a key item, which would not only open up different parts of the map, but also give you new abilities to solve puzzles you couldn't have before. Yes, it sounds a lot like a Metroidvania, and that's kind of what Zelda games have been from the very beginning. And in that sense, it would be rewarding finding a treasure chest. You wouldn't know what was inside of it. Maybe it was a rupee every once in a while, but sometimes you'd get a piece of heart. Remember pieces of heart? I sure do, and I miss those suckers. Now, if you find a treasure chest in one of these new Zelda games, it'll more often than not be a weapon with equal or lesser stats than your current weapons. And even then, that doesn't matter because that thing's gonna break in a few hits. <laughs> There's no doubt that acquiring new tools or finding items in treasure chests felt more rewarding in traditional Zelda games, and the same can be said for those classic dungeons. Tears of the Kingdom was a step in the right direction to bringing those more traditional style dungeons back, but they still have yet to realize what made those dungeons special. They all looked very diverse, each puzzle could only be solved one way, but that still didn't take away from their fun factor. And yeah, it's cool to give the player multiple solutions to just one puzzle, but there's something satisfying about more focused to dungeons, more focused puzzles, with one set path and one solution to them that just hasn't yet been replicated in this new formula. So let's go back to Aonuma's original quote, with him asking us why would we want to go back to the more limited and restricted Zeldas of old. It's not that we want Zelda games to be that exact style again, it's just that the aspects we liked about those games are either severely toned down or just downright gone in these new games. The structured narratives, the satisfying progression. All that stuff is just really not felt that much in these new Zelda games, all sacrificed in favor of creative freedom. Which, I should say, is far from a bad thing. Even though I love Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, they do feel very limited in a lot of aspects. Twilight Princess has you stuck playing as Wolf Link a lot of the time at the beginning. That game and Skyward Sword have a tendency to hold the player's hand way too much as well. But maybe the new Zelda games give players a little too much freedom? I remember seeing Ultra Hand for the very first time, and as cool of a mechanic as it was, I thought to myself, this is not why I play Zelda. I don't play Zelda games to make four videos about the world's longest stick. I play Zelda to experience oftentimes emotional stories. I like to solve the intricate puzzles of well-crafted dungeons. And you know what? Maybe that just makes me old. Because clearly this is a formula that's working for Nintendo. Even then, I still believe there's a way to make both new and current Zelda fans happy. Because there's still a demand for that traditional Zelda. Look at the sales numbers of the Link's Awakening remake and Skyward Sword HD. Sure, these numbers aren't anywhere near as impressive as the ones for Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, but given that they most likely did not cost nearly as much to make as those games, I'm sure Nintendo still made a pretty penny in profits from those re-releases. So if you're gonna make traditional Zelda fans happy, why not release Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD on Switch? At this point, they're probably coming out on Switch too, I just don't get why these haven't been ported sooner. And while we could keep getting remakes and remasters of those traditional Zelda games, I can't help but want a new 3D Zelda game in the style of Ocarina of Time, of The Wind Waker, of Twilight Princess. Maybe while the next big mainline open-air Zelda game is being made, Nintendo could get a smaller team to work on a less expensive 3D Zelda that's more traditional, with less open environments, maybe visuals that aren't that impressive, just to keep traditional fans happy and give other Zelda fans something to play while they wait for that next big experience. I know Grezzo has worked on a lot of these Zelda remakes and re-releases, so maybe let them try their hands at their own 3D Zelda. That's just a dream idea I've had, but what I really want for the next mainline Zelda game is for the development team to scale back some ideas. 
maybe sacrifice some of that overall freedom in favor of a better story. One that has a cohesive narrative. And given how the Dungeons and Tears of the Kingdom operate, I gotta think they're still trying to figure out how to make those Zelda dungeons feel as satisfying as the traditional ones again, while also still catering to that new gameplay style. Those recent interviews with Eiji Aonuma may seem to suggest that such actions are taking place by saying that that Ultra Hand mechanic is more than likely not going to come back in the next Zelda game. But say this never happens and Nintendo just decides to do away with the traditional Zelda formula altogether. That's where we'll have to turn to those Zelda-inspired indies. You know, games like Blossom Tales, Turnip Boy, Death's Door, Minute, Oceanhorn, and the upcoming Isles of Sea and Sky. It may be up to the independent game developers to keep that traditional Zelda scene alive. But I'm going to conclude this by saying that while I understand Aonuma's perspective here, I don't want him to be mistaken. Not everyone is asking for Zelda to go back to its traditional 3D roots and do away with the open air formula altogether. Rather, they're asking for the elements of that traditional style to be present in that new open air formula. If they could somehow find a perfect balance between the new and the old, then that might just make for one of the best Zelda games of all time.